Hey everybody! In today's video, I'm going to show you some very simple colored pencil coloring and just a quick way to sort of speed up one part of your coloring. Now I'm using this adorable gnome set. You guys know how I feel about gnomes. If there's a gnome set, I have to have it. So here they are. I've taken every gnome in the set because I'm going to create a little rainbow out of them. And I started with a sort of blush cardstock. I want you to think about your cardstock in terms of all the different skin tones that you can create. So think about all of your blush tones, your nice warm, dark tan tones brown tones, everything you can think of, you can get a head start on coloring little characters if you start with the color cardstock of the skin tone that you are coloring. So I decided to start with sort of a pale blush for my gnomes. On some of the gnomes, they're mostly beard, which is one of the most charming things about gnomes. <laughs> So there's not a lot there except like the hands and the nose, but then on the little girls, you can see more of their face. And that's just one extra thing that you don't have to color if you let your cardstock work for you. So to begin with, I am coloring some of the little beards. One of the purposes of showing you this today is to show you how easy it is to get the accurate color that you want, even on colored cardstock. So don't think that you just have to use colored pencils on white cardstock. That isn't the case at all. Now the type of pencil that you're using, of course that matters. So if you have a softer pencil like the ones that I'm using, you're getting this beautiful rich coverage over the top of the cardstock. If you have kind of a harder, waxier, pencil in your collection, then you might have to put down more layers to get this same look. But I'm able to do it with these super soft, creamy colored pencils that I just love. So I'm going around and adding some white and some black on the shoes and the belt. After I put the black down, I add just a little bit of white for a highlight and the white sort of blends everything together and makes it a very soft highlight, which I really like. You're going to see me do that on the little gnome hats as well. So I like to do all the colors at once. So ideally I would do all the little black shoes at once, the belts at once, but for some reason, my brain doesn't allow me to see everything that I'm supposed to be coloring the same color. So you're going to see me go back and fill in like the white apron and one complete white beard that I missed. Anyway, so here I'm doing a technique you may have seen me do with alcohol markers, which is to put down my darkest color first. I'm using just two colors on each gnome to create shadow and light. And this is just a really easy way to do colored pencils. So I go in and I put the dark tones in first, and then I put the lighter tone, in this case red, on top of it and blend that. And it really gives you a lot of nuance in your coloring. Now you can go back and add deeper shadows. Once you do that, you already have a layer of pencil on the paper and it's easier to do just like with alcohol markers. So you can use the same techniques here. I think that the reason that we don't see just a ton of colored pencil work in card making outside of the immensely talented Alice Keegan at Kit and Clowder is I think that people think that it's a difficult medium and it's really not. As you can see, this is some very simple coloring. I'm not doing Alice Keegan style coloring here. She is a true expert. Same with Dina Kowal. They, these are people who really know pencils well. But you don't have to be that kind of an artist to really enjoy colored pencil work and to spend the same amount of time coloring with colored pencils as you do with alcohol markers. It's not any slower. So since these were one of the first craft supplies that all of us bought ever, I mean, we probably all had colored pencils in elementary school. 
map pencils, as they were called in the late 1900s. It's time to really appreciate those, again, as the sort of versatile medium that they are. And the great thing about colored pencils is they are also the most portable medium. Get yourself a good pencil case. I'll put the ones that I use down in the comments. They all take up the same amount of space on my shelf. And really play with this medium. It is a great medium to travel with if you're traveling and you're not coloring something. They're a great sketching medium. You can also get watercolor pencils. I guess I'm just here as a propagandist for the colored pencil industry today. I'm just feeling like they don't get enough love. So I intend to do something about that because I love colored pencils. It's a very tactile experience coloring with a colored pencil. The different layers feel different as you get them built up. And it's really fun to get to that last layer where everything's super smooth. You don't really get that in another medium where the actual surface sort of changes under your hands. So I enjoy the heck out of it and I want you to too. And I don't want you to feel intimidated by it. Now you can see I'm going in rainbow order here. The next little gnome is orange. I think with gnomes, we get boxed in to certain <laughs> colors. We're so used to the red, right? My neighbor has a gnome, little red and white gnome, like you're used to seeing. But we're going to have rainbow gnomes today because we can do whatever we want. Now notice this little white highlight on the hats. This is such a simple, easy step, but look how much dimension that adds. Just to add that little highlight, and this is after all of my blending is done on the colored portion of the hat, which is one of the reasons that the white pencil goes down so smoothly and subtly is I already have a base built up of that beautiful colored pencil. Now, keep your pencil sharp, and you'll notice that I am coloring the whites of their eyes with that white pencil, because you definitely don't want them to have pink whites of their eyes and have somebody diagnosing your gnome on the YouTube. Can't have that, somebody thinking you got a sick gnome. So keep your pencils very sharp and make sure that you go back if you're using colored cardstock and color the whites of their eyes. Now this yellow, I'm using sort of a new gamboge. I don't actually know the color of this pencil. It's in the same set that I'm using, but the new gamboge has like a warmth to it that I'm using for the shading color. And I think that that's really pretty. It also sort of transitions from the orange to the yellow. And then I'm going to make the hair on both of the girls. You can't really see the boy's hair, but the girl's hair I'm going to make black just because I'm going to have a black card base. And I also have so much color going down on these little gnomes. I didn't want to add a blonde or a brown or a red hair. I thought it would be cute just to do black with little bitty white highlights, sort of where her hair is rounded. You can see how cute that highlight makes it. And again, I don't have to color her face. I don't have to color her hands. All that work is done for me. So I guess essentially this is kind of a lazy, I'm kind of promoting lazy coloring and I'm fine with that. I mean, that's more time to nap, to make coconut cake, to do whatever you feel like doing. Coconut cake is on my mind because my friend Bev found what looks like a fabulous recipe that I'm going to make this weekend. So I'll be sure and put that on my blog if I do end up making it. Now this lime green plus grass green combo is really, really pretty. If you wanted to take two gnomes out of this set and turn them into little Christmas gnomes, this can definitely be an all year set because look at the green and then look at the little red, almost Santa looking gnome lower right. I think this would be an adorable little Christmas combo. So she's so cute. Two of them have their eyes closed. Three of them have their eyes closed. So that makes it even easier to color because there's only two that you have to color the whites of their eyes. So I'm going back up their hats with the white highlight. Again, I just think that adds so much. It's incredible how much that adds. That's where really the bulk of the coloring is on these images anyway, because the hats are really pretty large in proportion to the bodies, as you will see on most gnomes. 
goodness knows we have to have anatomically correct gnomes, right? Otherwise, somebody's going to say, hey, your gnome's hat isn't big enough, and then where are we going to be? So I'll do the same thing, just give her black hair, but be careful to leave just some white space. You can fill it in with the white pencil, but it's really hard to get that highlight back if you don't leave it when you're coloring in the first place. So that is my advice to you on hair. Again, not super fancy coloring. All I did was skip a little bit. Now on the very last gnome, what I'm going to do is, because I don't have a sixth gnome, I'm going to combine blue and violet on this last gnome, and I think you're really going to like it. Now you can see that I'm about to have a little intruder. I don't know if you can see the shadow of that little ear there, but there's actually a cat on my shoulder while I'm coloring this, and things are about to go badly, badly wrong, but I'm just going to let it happen in this video because this is real life. This is real life on my channel, but you can see the ears moving around. I'm just building suspense for what's inevitably coming. Now with this layer of the purple, I'm actually coloring a dark layer that's a little bit lighter than I did on the other gnomes. And that is because this violet is so very dark. It's very much darker than the blue. So I wanted to get a layer of the blue down. There's more contrast between this shadow layer and the lighter layer than there is on all the other gnomes that I did. So I wanted to get a good layer of this brighter blue down before I went back and determined how much of that purple shading I wanted. This keeps it from being overwhelming or too dark or too kind of harsh and sharp. And it lets me really blend that the way that I want to blend it. Colored pencils want to blend on top of colored pencils. In this way, they are very similar to alcohol markers. You have to get a little bit of the medium down onto the page to really get the blending that you want. And you can see that as I go back and add both purple and blue to that little hat. Makes such a big difference. If I'd gone in very heavy handed with that violet at first, this would not be as good a result as it is. Here we go. It's like Godzilla hat edition because he's so out of proportion with everything that's going on. It's just like a giant cat in the frame. Actually, a really small cat, only seven pounds. But hello, everyone from Splotchy. Splotchy loves being in my videos. So now I'll go back after I put the extra dark violet down and I'll put more of the blue down and you can see what a difference that makes. Now I have a little bit of a pink that is slightly darker than my blush cardstock that I'm going to add some cheeks. I'm going to add some shading to their noses. I'll color their little tongues this darker pink, maybe some shading on their hands. Not much. You really don't need much because, like I said, the cardstock is doing the job for you. But a little bit of contrast on their faces keeps them from looking too flat. So just a little bit of cheek. Try to pick a color that is just like a hair darker than the cardstock. Anything that's really dark is going to show up a little bit too well on that soft blush cardstock, but I think it's so cute. So I want to add some little white freckles on top of the cheeks. This is just such a cute technique that I've seen all over the internet, and I love the way it looks. It's just kind of sweet. I don't know why white freckles are so cute, but they are. So here are all the little gnomies. How cute are they? And I put them on this adorable rainbow background on a mini slimline card. Put some little jewels on their caps. Head over to my blog for more information about this and check the description for a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching.